this is Fantasy Ask, and welcome back to The Sims 4 Royal Witch Kingdoms. Today we are continuing with the royal family of Holcane. Prince Vex and Princess Luna have finally done their royal consummation, so their marriage is essentially complete, and we can see the nosy queen Leia, High Queen Leia, she was waiting outside their quarters, or maybe she came to like check up on them after they had been in there for a while. Um, and Vex obviously knew that he has to report to his Tetral Analka, so he got out, he slipped out of bed, and he basically told her that the consummation is complete. So as you can see, we have this uh, wind chime up here. It is royal custom. We've seen this in the very beginning of this series with the three marriages that happened um, in Holcane, Sikar and Ramong, uh, the royals during their kind of first night together, um, they hung up a wind chime once the marriage you know, was consummated. So that is something that the royals do and finally we got to see it once again with our first royal marriage in the second generation with Vex and Luna. Now, I cannot say how much I adore the portrait that we have of, like, their wedding portrait up here. I just think it is so precious and so lovely. Um, and it was nice to see how many of you lovelies enjoyed the wedding and um, the drama that happened in the previous episode. You know, not all of which was expected, um, especially between uh, King Uther and High Queen Leia. Who knows what's going to happen with them at this point. Hopefully they manage to keep the peace somehow, but this is kind of nice. Vex is down here with his younger Vlaro and with his Tetula Kotyan. They're chatting, they're bonding. Sons and fathers, that's really great to see. Um, the queen is kind of off her own, on her own. She's been quite cranky with Uther, of course, but she's still been like attracted to him, but obviously nothing's happening because they're both kind of annoyed and frustrated at each other. But with Luna, I am quite, ah, uh, I'm quite eager to see whether or not she is pregnant. Because if you guys remember, we get our Sims to try for a baby during the consummation. And that is the one and only time we actually, you know, force them. Um, outside of that, we have to wait for wants or whims for them to tell us they want to try for a baby. Or sometimes, um, oh, pop, 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 look at that, look at that. Guys, she's feeling a bit queasy, and she had kind of like a love heart, so maybe, maybe she is expectant? And look, her first woohoo, um, she had a memorable experience, and so did he, which is actually very nice to see. But, I am, I'm anticipating this, because... I mean, we saw Luna be born in this series, and now, you know, she's old enough to have a baby on her own. It's it's very, very odd, but I think it's, I think it's exciting. So, we have that going on with Luna, and this means it'll be, I mean, if she's pregnant, our first baby in this next generation, like in the third generation. But I was saying before, um... With the whims, because of how things have changed and been updated in The Sims 4, whims are not what they were before. I am unsure as to how frequently they will have the want to try for a baby. So we're gonna have to kind of just test for a bit and see if it comes up or how often it comes up. Um, if not that, then I'm gonna be relying on like those pop-up messages we get um, from other households saying that they want to expand their family. I'm thinking that maybe that system is still working normally, um, and that might be how primarily the families expand. We will have to see. I don't remember from the top of my head if we've had those requests since the whims have changed, but I'm hoping that we have. I know it was quite frequent, like beforehand. So there is that. But another huge thing that um, will be an accompaniment to pregnancies now um, going forward. One of you lovelies um, in the comments, I think of the previous video, I might be mistaken, suggested that we should have 
a chance, or we should have some way of, you know, the Sims potentially dying from childbirth. And we obviously didn't have anything like that previously. And so I thought about it, and I felt that maybe this would be the perfect time with Luna to bring that into, you know, our system of doing things, just because this is kind of the first pregnancy in the second generation. So basically what I've decided is that from this point onwards, every female witch will be like randomly assigned a percentage chance of dying in childbirth. So with a normal female witch, like a healthy, you know, female witch, they will have between zero to nine percent chance that I will randomize for um, of dying in childbirth. And then for a sickly witch like Calypso, they will have a 10 to 19 percent chance of dying in childbirth. So I think that will make it a lot more interesting. And so I will have to change um, how certain things are done. For example, when we do have the babies, typically we've had it on camera, but I might have to make that something that's off camera because, you know, I, I don't really have a mod for this and I don't think I want to get one. I can just make do with, you know, my system of doing things. Um, so I think what we'll do now is when our witches are ready to, you know, give birth or in labor, they'll basically go behind closed doors and then we will have to catch up with them after the baby has been born to see what the gender of the baby is, the name of the baby, um, and then whether or not the mother survived childbirth. I think that will be a lot more interesting for us. So basically, um, when with Luna, I think I don't rem I think she's got like a seven or eight percent chance of dying from childbirth. I'm pretty sure she's got seven or eight. So when she's in labor and ready to have her baby, like if she is pregnant, then we'll send her behind closed doors. Um, she'll have the baby off camera and essentially what I'll do is I will randomize a number between 0 and 100 and oh well that doesn't make sense to have 0 and 100 there's some some sims I included the 0 in there because I want some witches to be just like immune to death from childbirth so they'll like never die from childbirth they're just that healthy right um, everything's that ideal and perfect with them, they, they won't die from childbirth. Um, that's why when I'm randomizing for a normal witch, their chance it's between 0 and 9. But I think, like for example, if Luna is an 8, then what we'll do is go behind closed doors. When she has the baby, I'll randomize a number between 1 and 100, right? Because that makes more sense. 1 and 100, and if she gets a number that is 8 or lower, that means she will die from childbirth. But if she gets a number that's 9 or higher, um, then she will survive the childbirth. So that is kind of what I'm thinking. Let me know what you guys feel about this situation. Um, I think it'll make things a lot more exciting. Um, especially because we do have, you know, spares. We only have currently 9 marriages taking place and once these sims, once the second generation, they start taking the throne um, and we introduce the fourth kingdom, we'll have a total of 12 marriages, but then we'll have a ton of spares, right? Because these witch families aren't exactly small, some of them are quite big. So at least if we have things like a spouse potentially dying from miscarriage, that will make things a lot less stagnant because we could have sims who need to remarry, um, those spares, you know, might be brought in as second spouses to um, different heirs and such, or even with female heirs, you know, they could potentially die. So then another one of their siblings um, have to take on um, the place as the next, like, head of the household. And if that's the case, then depending on whether or not they're married and they have kids, you know, they might have to be separated or maybe they're younger single siblings are the ones who inherit um, because they are already married. I haven't worked it out. Initially I was thinking that, um, for example, like Luna is second born 
in her family of four siblings. If Fena ever dies from childbirth, then initially I was thinking that since Luna is second born, you know, she would have to be the next High Queen, the ruler of Sikar. But then she would have to essentially divorce um, Vex so that Vex can be the heir of Holkane and she can be the heir of Sikar. And she would remarry and Vex would remarry. But what happens if they have kids? Do the kids stay with Vex since they are Holkane kids? So initially that's what I was thinking would happen. Um, but now I'm actually wondering if we have spares, that might be like the extreme case. If we have spares in a household, then I'm thinking the youngest spare is probably going to take over. So like Prince Elrond is the third child. And currently, like, he's not betrothed to anyone, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, currently, in this situation, right? If Feyna did die, then instead of Luna being called back to Sikar, she maybe should keep her marriage intact, and Elrond, since he is unmarried, he's like a spare child, he should take on the throne. So that's some of the things I've been considering um, now that we've kind of reached to this stage. So, again, let me know what you guys think, but I feel like that's what I might do. So, in situations where we only have, you know, two children and the heir dies, um, then maybe the younger sibling has to inherit, and if the younger sibling is married, they're going to have to divorce their partners um, and remarry. And then any children from the new marriage will be the heirs kind of situation. So, that's what I'm thinking of, but... If we have a spare that is unmarried, then like a bachelor, then um, or a spinster, I feel like they should inherit. That would be fair because then you don't have to, you know, break marriages. That should be the extreme, extreme case, um, at least in my mind. But I am very, very curious about Luna. She is going to use, but she has been queasy. Um, she did get out of bed, and the first thing she thought of was. Um, the consummation because she had like a love heart and a thought bubble and then she was feeling queasy a bit later and she was thinking about a baby and then she was talking to Vex over the dining table um, about children you know about expanding their family I feel so we might be we might be having good news at some point and I'm just like watching her like a hawk to see when we get that good news. Um, because, I mean, all of us, we just, we really love Luna and Vex. So this is, this is just going to be so, so fun. If we go have, and like go ahead and have this. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It would be nice. Now she... This is supposed to be her room, but at the same time, because she and Vex are in a loving relationship, and right, so I didn't really talk about the, um, I don't really talk about the, the movie, which I normally do, but we kind of saw that, obviously because she comes from a royal household, she would be aware of, you know, this custom of the wind chime with a royal consummation. Maybe to a noble spouse, it would have to be explained, but because they're both royals, they know how it goes. They're familiar with those customs. Um, it's like not something new they had to learn or anything. Um, so he brought that over to her so they can have the royal consummation. And I think like he obviously was excited to have her alone with him. And she was excited to be alone with him too. And he, you know, told her that he is in love with her. I mean, yes, their marriage was arranged, um, but I think as they got to know each other, they started liking each other more and more. And the Sikars, they're known as very beautiful Sims, very beautiful. All the, the girls are seen as really beautiful um, princesses, and even the prince is very, very attractive in my opinion. So I think Vex kind of admired that and slowly, you know, started falling in love with her. So by the time they married, 
um, they were not really strangers to each other. I don't feel like they would have been anxious to be marrying a stranger. I think if anything, they would have been quite, quite excited to finally be together. So I'm hoping their marriage goes smoothly. And I know a bunch of you guys are as well. We love this couple and it's so nice to know. Some of you were saying it's actually really cool that the first couple to get married uh, are actually in love. Um, and no doubt we'll see different sorts of marriages. You know, some couples might not get along well. See, look, look at this, look at this, guys. She's gagging and she's thinking about a potential baby. So I, I think there's like a really good chance that she is pregnant. I think there's a really good chance that she is. So if you guys have names, feel free to leave those names. Um, I'll keep adding them to the list that I started at the beginning of this series. So we have something to draw on, but definitely start leaving names. So yeah, we, we kind of had that going on. And they kind of, you know, call each other my love, which is so, so sweet, in my opinion. So, so sweet. And I'm also wondering, like with the whole canes, they actually... I feel like had a very difficult time with expanding the family. I mean, not too difficult. Vex was the result of his parents' royal consummation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you know, there was a huge gap between when Vex was born and when Edmund was born. So their family, like the Holkins royal, the Holkin royals, typically they have really small families, whereas the Sikars they have huge families. Princess Luna is from one of the biggest families, if not the biggest, um, in like across the kingdoms in the entire series. So I'm wondering whether she's going to spread that to the whole canes. Like I'm wondering if the whole canes are gonna have a huge family in Vex's generation because of Luna, like the Sikar kind of side, or if they're gonna have a very small family because of the dominant Hulkane side. What do you guys think? I'm really curious. I'm really curious how things are gonna pan out between them. But, okay. It's good to see that they are definitely having some family time with each other. Um, but I will leave them be and maybe we can catch up when Luna is sure of her condition. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting, but Let's catch up when we have a, like, a firm kind of positive or negative on, on whether or not she is actually expecting. Okay, hi Prince Vex and Princess Luna were sitting down at the dining table at 12.30am and Luna found out that she is indeed pregnant. So as you can see, she has her baby bump. For the first trimester um, just wait let me confirm yep she's in her first trimester but there we go she has the bump she is indeed pregnant which is very very exciting for us because that means that Vex will have an heir of his own which is a big deal to Leia now, I'm not sure how Uth is gonna feel about his grandchildren he obviously loves his sons very much but he does not like children, like he never wanted children. Um, that was They were kind of just a, a consequence of the marriage with Leia, right? I mean, they needed an heir and then Leia kind of wanted to have a spare with Edmund so that Vex could have a, a friend. So that's what ended up happening, but you know, he himself never really wanted a huge family and that's part of why the Holkin family has been very, very small. But Vex, he's not like that. Um, yes, he's gloomy paranoid, but I think Luna brings him a lot of peace and affection. So she, he's kind of excited to have a family of his own. As for Luna, I think she's going to be very happy about this pregnancy. Um, mainly because, look, she's materialistic, glutton, you know, art lover, which I assume means she loves uh, the precious items. Um, afforded to her because of you know her privileged standing in society and also just 
witch history. She's very proud of her history. I do associate art with history quite a bit in The Sims, um, in terms of, you know, traits and such. And I think, given that Luna grew up in a, a household that really revered themselves and their lineage and their appearance, all of those kind of things, like, they're quite narcissistic, the Sikars, right? Uh, especially hiking Yorick. So I think for Luna, this baby is very important because she is, you know, strengthening the whole cane bloodline. She's now a whole cane, no longer a Sikar, but she's stre strengthening the whole cane bloodline. She's um, adding, like, the great Sikar lineage to Vex's family. Um, and also, like Leia said, the true success of the Union is going to be when Luna produces an heir. And right now, that's happening. So she is kind of like worth the time and effort spent on her. Um, and this is, you know, going to increase her standing. She's going to be able to enjoy herself a lot more. People will look up to her. And those are all things that Leia, uh, sorry, Luna really really likes i think you know being married into a royal household is kind of like her dream come true and i think that's my maybe why she also started falling in love with with vex but i don't think i've mentioned this now some of the outfits have gotten an update uh because now you know they are married young adult sims so with Luna's everyday wear as a princess, she now wears this white dress um, instead of the pink one that she had, which, you know, is the dress that her sisters kind of wear, the princess attire, because they're unmarried princesses. But once they become married, they'll wear like the dress that Luna's wearing right now. And same for Vex. This is kind of his new like everyday attire as a married prince. So before he used to wear something similar to Elrond, just in a different color. So, you know, if there's another prince that gets married, then they will wear this attire. Kind of shows that they have a, a different marital status in society now. A different standing in society. It is higher than that of um, unmarried sims their age. So there we go. Well, this is great news. Great, great news. Um, I just can't wait to see how the kids look um you know what skin colors are gonna pass on are we gonna retain the red hulking skin are we gonna start getting some of that blue from Sikar? um and, and the hair colors that live on the eye colors i think it's just all gonna be so fascinating um and also do you think they're gonna have a bora girl now i don't think no we have had multiples and do you think they're gonna have multiples or not i mean we have space in the household for three more uh, Sims currently, so you know she could have three babies, or she might just have one. And do you think it's going to be a boy or a girl? Are you hoping for a boy or a girl? I don't care because it, it doesn't really matter. I think, like, since it is literally the first baby in their generation, like in the third generation, um, we're not trying to even out the numbers. So probably towards the end, once we start having, you know a few boys and girls like once we have all the heirs then we'll kind of know um if we want more boys or if we want more girls depending on that so okay um edmund he wanted to befriend luna and i suppose he hasn't done that yet um he's trying every once in a while to keep chatting her up which is good now in terms of updates with the relationships we had King Uther, um, he suddenly wanted to like become enemies with Lord High Lord Ignatius. So Queen Leia, he asked Leia to you know summon Ignatius to Holcane, the palace, and Leia did because Leia, she has a cordial relationship with Ignatius. Um, and then Uther kind of just started insulting him, tore into him. They had a fight. Uther lost, but he ended up declaring High Lord Ignatius his enemy. Now, in case you guys need a reminder of why that is, I think he also declared Eric his enemy before the wedding. Um, if not, I think before the wedding, probably, if not during. But essentially, the royals have had 
uh, in whole cane have had a very low opinion of the hooligans for a long time. Um, and that kind of went even lower when the hooligans arranged the marriage of their son with a sickly, not a sickly child, but they arranged the marriage of the son with someone who is from a sickly family. So High Lord Ignatius, his heir is sickly, but he married his young, he betrothed his younger daughter to the heir of Holdigan. Um, and now Uther feels as though the whole cane nobles, like the noble bloodlines, are getting tainted by sickness. And um, they kind of, these guys, they kind of look down on the nobles just a little bit, or at least on the Holdigans. Um, so, you know, he's, he wanted to denounce Ignatius for tainting the, the nobility of Holcain. So that is why I think he declared Ignatius his enemy. So that's kind of like a social update in terms of what's going on with these sims. And he's trying to flirt with Leia. I don't know how well that's going to go. You can kind of look at their relationship. It is all in the red. Um, look, every time they try and romance each other, like they still want to, and then every time they try, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So I don't know how long that's gonna last. Um, and Edmund, yes, do feed yourself. Do feed yourself. We do not want um, anyone to croak over, anyone to die unexpectedly. That would not be great. And was Luna always fit? I don't know, it was this like a recent thing. Now, Vex has grown up swimming, but for some reason he now has a fear of, of swimming. I don't know how that came about, but there we go. And since he's a dog lover, I feel as though he might want a magic wolf at some stage, but we have yet to acquire one. Um, we do have a magic wolf with the Holdigans currently, and actually the next time, depending, the next time we play with them, we might see if we can try breeding that we have a neighborhood Broly and not participating. But yeah, we might see if we can try breeding their magic wolf with, I think Chilla is the name, with um, the one in Ramong. There's a male wolf in Ramong that was, you know, born domestically, but um, that might be, that might be good. And then any pups from that union we might see about potentially um, giving it to Holkane, the royal family of Holkane, since Vex would, uh, I think, like a an animal companion. So, yeah, okay. Well, Edmund, are you done eating? Yes, why don't you try and speak to your sister-in-law just a little bit more? Maybe give her a heartfelt compliment. Edmund's just really nice, he's really welcoming, and also, I, I do think, you know, he's grown up hearing about the Sikha princesses, um, and she was kind of one of the first ones he ever saw, after, like, on their, on their wedding day when she came, you know, he, she was one of the first ones, or I think just before the wedding, actually, um, maybe just before the wedding, Vex kind of arranged for Luna to come and meet his Vlaro, so his brother, and I think for Edmund it was like everything is heard, you know, finally getting to see it and it being true, like he, she is really beautiful and you know, all of the things that people say the sick cars are, so he just really admires her and really likes her and obviously the other, the other uh, princes and princesses he's seen from Sikar, because obviously since the wedding, her family's come to visit, her siblings have come to visit, he's just found them really, really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's actually quite sweet, that he's wanting to keep a good friendship with his sister-in-law, and seems as though that he has managed to do, so that's excellent. I'm happy for her to, you know, have friends here, that would be good. I mean, she is really close to Vex, I already know that, and now she's managed to befriend Edmund, so she's gonna have um, two people she's really comfortable with in the family. She has a positive impression of Leia, and I think a slightly negative impression of Uther, because Uther did try and flirt with her father, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Um, but obviously, they are her royal in-laws, right? Uh, Tetrala Bon, for father-in-law, and Tetrala Tura, mother-in-law, royal mother-in-law. 
Um, so I, I don't know when she's gonna manage to befriend them or if she ever is gonna manage to befriend them. I do imagine they are a tad bit intimidating. So there is that. There is that. It is good to have some of the sims, like younger sims, that she can connect with. Because the older ones are kind of crazy and are kind of scary. At least with Leia. She's a psycho queen. So, yeah. I, I think that's good. Now, actually, mm. yeah, we don't know the... We don't know the the magic wolves that I want to breed, unfortunately. But that's okay. Well, that can be dealt with. And look at this. Look at how freaking low his hunger is getting. This weird thing that's happening with the game is so odd and dangerous, I'm telling you. Like, honestly, the, the Sims at this point, they have a higher chance of just dying from hunger than anything else. Um, I know some of you have been telling me that maybe I have a broken mod or something. That, like, a better stories mod or some other broken mod that is um, causing that to happen. Because sometimes that is the case, but I do not have a better story mod. And I don't have any UI mods either installed. So there shouldn't be anything that's causing that. If anything, it is probably some update they made to the game that is screwing things over. But Vex, please eat before you die. Seriously, dude. This is kind of concerning. And the thing is, this is so scary because it literally does not give you a color indication that something's wrong with the sims, the needs are low, and it'll stay green and you don't even get a moodlet until it is like zero and they are dying. It just triggers the death. Um, that's what happened to our alchemist in our Vampire Amazon series, and there was nothing to prepare me for that. Um, so, yeah, we need to keep an eye. So, like, the pregnancy situation is probably going to be even more precarious for us because of, you know, the potential death now from hunger. Um, or, well, I don't think your sims can die if they're pregnant, so that's kind of her buffer. That's good. But, if her needs are low enough, then her child has a chance of being born sickly, and since we can't see, like, we can't see whether her, you know, emotions are in the red or orange, we have to keep an eye out for her needs. Um, and before I used to use kind of like a, like if three or more of her needs are not in the green, then the child is sickly. But I think I'm going to have to change it because, well, the colors don't work anymore. Um, if the needs are kind of lower than the, like how it, the word bladder, like if it's, lower than the letter R, then that counts as a low need. And same thing for everything else. With fun, I suppose that that's a bit easier to deal with. For example, right now, energy. It's kind of under the word. Or it's um, below the word. What am I saying? You guys know what I'm saying, right? Behind the word, respectively. So I feel like that is like a really really low need why are you exercising when you are tired you should be sleeping woman i don't know what's wrong with her like she should be sleeping but she is up here i mean she's down here uh, running on the treadmill when really she just needs rest this is concerning this is very concerning or maybe you know what no no i think what i think the fair thing to do is if the needs are lower than half and that should be really easy to tell because like with bladder right now we know that's not below half right so that's okay but with energy and hygiene even you can tell that hygiene is like way below half so that counts as a low need so i think that's what i'm gonna do i feel like that's pretty fair um to keep track of things okay she's got 14 hours till the second trimester maybe we'll catch up when we've got that going on. It's midnight, things are peaceful, Princess Luna is floating away in front of the palace in the pool. Oh, yep, there we go, there we go. She is in her second trimester now. Things are looking good in terms of her needs. I have been keeping an eye on her. Now one thing I do want to mention is that I feel as though the whole butler thing we have going on is just so useless. You know that in every household, 
the spouse that is not the heir, they kind of, you know, prepare the meals. It's part of their duties, one of their duties. Um, and the butler in the royal household is supposed to do that. But I want them to do it autonomously and they just don't, which is frustrating because then everyone's hungry and we like never have food. Um, and that's annoying. I mean, the butler handles like fixing things and cleaning up well. It's just the making of food. And then when you tell them to do it, it takes too long. Like, you might as well just do it yourself rather than give them an instruction and then wait for them to go and do it, right? So I've decided that we're going to follow the same system in the royal household as we do with the noble houses, even though we will still have a butler for cleaning and fixing. So Uther's job, as the one who isn't, you know, head of the house, is to do the cooking. So he made some eggs and toast, and we have to make sure that, th that there's always some type of food on the table. We cannot throw it in the fridge because it is going to go bad. So we've got that going on. In other news, Utha and Leia have decided that they now despise each other. So as far as I see it, I don't think their relationship is going to repair itself in any way, shape, or form. Unfortunately, um, the way I'm looking at it, they might just be on bad terms till the day they die, which is very, very sad. And it's literally just because of the cheating. Just because of the cheating. Now, let's see how everyone else is going. Luna wants to make out with Prince Vex. Okay, so it's good to know that, you know, her relationship with Vex is going really well. Um, and then Vex wants to be friendly with Princess Luna, of course. Utha wants to divorce Queen Leia. What? King Uther knows what love is, and being married to Queen Leia is not it. Hmm. He can divorce her, I suppose, but what's gonna happen even if they do divorce? I mean, at this point, I feel like even if they do divorce, they will have, like, he will not be able to leave the household. He will still remain king. Like, he will be Leia's king, he just won't be married to her. And, you know, obviously part of that is because, uh, you know, he is an elder now. And also, this will have political consequences if they separate from each other. It'll, you know, whole cane might be considered a, a broken kingdom if the high queen and king... Um, break off, live separately. Um, and it's even more important now that Vex is married and Vex is about to become a Kotian himself. So I think it is going to be a big deal. So maybe Utha will go ahead with this divorce and I don't think it'll be a secret. Um, you know, people will know of it, but Utha, maybe the conditions of the divorce will be that Utha remains king in the royal household and he remains in the palace to kind of show a unified front to the others um you know like just because the king and queen are divorced doesn't mean they're not powerful rulers of whole king so that's kind of an interesting twist i suppose i thought that maybe they'll be able to you know fix their marriage somehow over time but no it's just gotten worse and worse and there's no going back at this point point. and what was this uh, oh, look at that. Just when I was saying that the butler is useless, he actually made something. I am impressed. I am impressed. But yes, she wants to make out with Vex. So, oh, Vex is here. Maybe you should take a food down to him? Perhaps? Let's, let's spend some, let's spend some time with Vex, shall we? Let's go, let's go take our food. Spend some time with Vex. We'll go do that. We will go do that. So, come on. Let's let's go down. Queen's coming too. But that makes me curious. Like, if they do divorce each other, how is the dynamic in the house going to be? Like, how is it going to be? Okay, I do realize Edmund is here. But Edmund, child, close your eyes. Your, um, Vlaro. And your... Stag the in-law? I haven't even thought of what we're going to call the sister-in-law. I actually have to figure that out. Um, 
probably is going to be like a different name to what kind of like how you have father-in-law and mother-in-law um, so that's gonna be interesting we're gonna have to figure some of those terminologies out um, which I haven't even thought about but these guys are sweet these guys are sweet next episode she's gonna be having the baby which is gonna be exciting but also scary because we have a chance of her dying in childbirth an 8% chance I did check she's got an 8% chance that's just like genetically that's her genes um, and I think in her family she actually like out of the the girls in her family the Sikars the princesses I think she's got the highest chance to die from childbirth the other ones I think I think Faina is a seven and Padme the youngest one is a five something like that anyways guys with that said and done I'm gonna leave off thank you so much for watching I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.